Good morning, Waikikilo Baptist Church. Good morning. Welcome to the Tabernacle of God. Behold, there stands before you this morning a messenger of the Most High God. Be still and listen, O God's people. For the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has a message for you. To him who has ears, let him hear. As the Lord of heaven and earth reveals his holy word today through the lips of his humble servant. Wow. Pretty brassy self-introduction, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, who steps up in front of a church where they've never preached before and immediately starts to spout off about being a messenger of the Most High God? I mean, who does that? Does that make you a little bit uh, uneasy this morning? It should. It really should. You know, statistics say, and I love statistics because you can make statistics say whatever you want to hear. And so statistics say there are three kinds of people that would stand up here and spout off like I just did this morning. The first one, the self-centered, egocentric. You all know this guy, right? The one who walks into a room full of people, looks around and says, somebody's got to be in charge, might as well be me. And they'll walk up front and they'll talk and they'll do anything it takes to get people to follow them. Now, I'll have to admit, I could be that guy. It's a little secret. My wife, in the privacy of our own home, bless her little blonde heart, she calls me Mr. Peacock. You guys have all seen peacocks, right? It's the male of the species, of course. It likes to get up in front of everybody, fan their tail feathers, and strut. Okay? My wife makes the claim that you give me a room full of people and a microphone, I'll act just like a peacock. And I'll talk just as long as I can get people to listen. So, could I be a self-centered egocentric? I just could be that guy. Now, the second kind of guy would do that is just a certifiable lunatic. You know, this is a guy that actually is just off his rocker enough to believe that God has given him and only him a message. And his mission in life is to get people to follow him. They usually end up in some cult in some strange little place where nobody's ever been before. And uh, people follow him. And he's got the power, and could I be that guy? Well, you know, they say, and you know who they are, right? They are the ones who make up the statistics. They say that there's a fine line between genius and insanity. Now, I've been accused of crossing over that line a kind of myself. And I like to think that the only reason that I've crossed over that line is because I'm forced to walk so close to the edge. So, certifiable lunatic, yeah. I could be that guy. But the last kind of guy, the last kind of guy that might stand up in front of you and proclaim to be a messenger of God, just might be the real deal. Just possibly could be a messenger of God. And my question for you this morning is, how do you know the difference? How do you know? Now the reason I bring this up is because this is the first time I've preached in this church. Now for me that means I've spent the past three weeks studying, and praying, and just basically stressing out about what God would have me to say, how he would have me to say it, and how he'd use it to his glory. And a result of that past three weeks of work, I made three claims when I came up here this morning. I claimed that I was a messenger of God. I claimed that he has a message for you. And I claimed that he would reveal his message through me this morning. And my job today is I'm going to make good on those three claims. But what about you? What about the church? Do you ever think of what your part is when a new preacher steps up here, whether it be me or anyone? Whether when they step up here in front of you, do you ever think about what your part is? Did you even know you have a part? So this morning, let's think about that. What is your role, as well as my role, as the messenger of God? Because discerning believers will take whatever the messenger says and they're going to compare it to the Word of God to make sure that they are telling the truth. So as I begin to make good on my three promises, let's consider what the Word of God has to say about discerning believers. If you will, in your outline, please read with me 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3. Ready? Begin. Beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test the 
spirits to see whether they are from God, because the many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming, and now it is already in the world. Okay, so what did John tell us here about being a discerning Christian? Well, the first thing he said right there in verse 1 is, do not believe every spirit. Okay, what, before we go any farther, what's John mean when he talks about spirits? He's talking about ghosts, he's talking about angels, he's talking about men, what's he talking about? Well, when he talks about spirits, what he's talking about, and, and I got this from the Erdman Pulp of Commentary, and I think it explains it really well. It says, the spirits are principles and tendencies in religion. And these need to be tested, for earnestness and fervor are no guarantee of truth. Earnestness and further, fervor are no guarantee of truth. So when I get up here and I speak to you, if I can put on a good show and make you all feel good and it sounds really nice, does not mean it's the truth. Does not mean it's the truth. The principles and tendencies in religion, if it's just a lot of show and a, and a lot of a lot of fancy words, it's no guarantee of truth. What it says is you need to test the principles. And testing the principles is the duty of every Christian as well as the entire church. So you can't just sit back and say, well, pastor said this guy can preach. He must know what he's talking about. Because it's the duty of every Christian to decide if the speaker teaches the truth. And the spirit of every religious teacher must be examined before his teaching can be accepted. The spirit of every teacher must be examined before his teaching can be accepted. So when you put this all together, it says don't believe every spirit. Just because somebody steps up on the platform and can speak doesn't mean they're telling the truth. What it says is to test the spirits. But how do you know who you can believe? How do you know? If we read on in verse 1 here, it tells us to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Now you can find out if you can believe the spirit by giving them the test. Now that should raise a couple questions in our mind. First of all, why do we need to do this? Why is this important? And secondly, how do we do it? If it is important, how do we do it? 